Hey, this is Sakura, and you're tuned into Rolling Out. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, everybody, to Rolling Out. I'm Rashad Milligan, and today we are joined here by a very, very special guest as part of the Title Rising Artist Program in Atlanta. We have uh, Sakura. Sakura. First things first, how are you doing? Did I get it right? Did I get it right? I know we just yeah, went you got over it right. Video, so much going. Okay, okay, all right. All right, cool, cool. Uh, how, how are you doing today? I'm really good, really, really good. Um, had a great morning. We uh, touched bases with um, First News Atlanta this morning, and so I'm happy to be here. Um, just have a quick conversation about uh, music. No, 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 for sure, for sure. And uh, I guess just the first thing I want to get into is like your name, because it is, uh, it's funny. Because for me, it was kind of reverse, I guess, of, of everybody else. I guess everybody else kind of knew, like, the origins of the name. Me, I found out who you were first. And mm -hmm. then I saw, like, later, I was like, oh, that's the name of an anime character. I didn't even know. So, like, I guess, you know, kind of where did the whole name come from and stuff? Yes. Um. So my, my middle name is actually Sakura. Um, and that one also is a the name of a uh, Japanese anime character. It's going to be from Naruto. But um, my mom, my mother, she's Japanese. And so when she, when I was born, she wanted to make sure she gave me a Japanese name. So um, she gave me Sakura as well. And and uh, if I'm not mistaken, like I remember it was like a long time ago, probably like 2020 or something like that, maybe 2021, where I was just kind of like going back through your music. And like I came upon some old stuff. And it was like, it was pretty popular and you had a different stage name. Am I tripping with that? Or like, what was this kind of going on with that? Yeah, I went through a couple of stage names. I went by Nyx at one point, N-I-X. I went by River at another point. I think these these kind of like lasted with me for maybe about a few months. And then I switched over to my full name, Nicole Sakura Watson. Then I was releasing a couple of songs. Um, and then I was kind of just like, nudged into the direction of just sticking with Sakura um, or Sakura. And here we are. <laughs> for sure, for sure. And you were popping too uh, a couple of those songs under those different names. I guess just like, uh, what was there any like personal thing or anything like that? I mean, even if you're, because I feel like when a lot of people start to get attention with music, with a song or something with the name, they kind of have to like, feel like they have to stick to it with that name. What was mm -hmm. it for you? For me, honestly, even if I, I got a little bit of traction from the songs that I was working on or songs that I did release at the time, um, I think I was really always um, looking for authenticity at, uh, throughout my whole career with making music. Um, when I was doing, um, doing music by the name of Nyx or River, I felt like I had to be a different person than myself. And so um, with being authentic in who I am through my music, I felt as if um, going by my full name would probably be the best way to represent myself as an artist. Um, and then simplifying that into just using my, um, my middle name, I think I'm able to still be an artist, but also still be true to myself through the art. Okay. Okay. For sure. For sure. Now, now let's get into the kind of the main reason why you're here right now, uh, with the title rise and docu-series, uh, highlighting some of, uh, Atlanta's top and up and coming artists. Um, I guess just, you know, how did it feel to be selected for that project and how are you feeling about it? Honestly, it's it's still very much a dream right now. I think it's it's such an amazing opportunity or it's such an honor to be able to be selected and and represent just like not only just one part of music in Atlanta, not just R&B, but also just to be able to, to show how much music there is coming out from Atlanta. Um, it definitely makes me feel very grateful to be able to share my story and also to be able to inspire anyone who wants to be a mu musician. I'm definitely still in the very beginning stages of my career and just to be able to like reach people to share my story um, at this stage, I think it's really such an honor. Well, what do you think of the phrase it takes 10 years to be an overnight success? I think it's true. I think it it very much is is something that I strive for. I think the the life that I want, the the dream and goal that I wish to have in, with my career, I think it won't come overnight. I think um, it takes hard work, practice, a lot of uh, determination, a lot of discipline. And I think um, through my day to day life, I'm I'm striving to work towards those things. So I definitely do agree that it would take ten years to be an overnight so like sensation. 
Okay, for sure, for sure. And uh, the the song, the single, I, I I let it up. I warmed it up. I warmed it up. But the one that they got me, and you know it a billion times because I say it a, a gazillion times everywhere I go. Uh, ran into David X up there in uh, Philly and Made in America. We talked about it, wrote about it, everything like that. I've been crazy about this song ever since it came out. 2020, be going back. Quarantine, first couple months. I think I was on like SoundCloud or something like that, working from the house. And this song comes up. I'm like, man, this is hard. Like, mm-hmm. oh, this is amazing. Like, like you know, the, the level, the layers, like, kind of build throughout the song. I'm like, oh, this song is it. Like, this is it. And I look at it, I'm like, produced by David X. That's my boy from Georgia State. I look you up. And I was like, she goes to Georgia. Like, it, it was the whole thing was, like, crazy to me. Um, I guess just, like, chasing feelings. What what went into that entire thing? What went into releasing it a couple months into quarantine? Like, all that good stuff. Well, it's, it's always such a blur whenever I recall writing a song. I think whenever I sit down and write my music, I do remember – um living in southwest atlanta i was living with two roommates i had my piano plugged in i was just like playing around the chords and so every song that i write it just kind of the words kind of fall into the song the the song basically wrote itself i wrote i think the first verse and the chorus and second verse in one evening and then i recorded everything and so i think I then then I uh, showed Steve-O the song that I had written. And then he pushed me to write uh, write a, a bridge. And so by the time I had first verse, second verse, chorus, and bridge put together, um, I then presented it to, to David because I think f- for a lot of the music that I write, I, I start it myself and I see if I can push it to whatever level that I my abilities um, allow me to, and then I'll reach out for help. And so at the time, David was always helping me with music. He's just like pushing me to be a better artist. Um, also just like putting a, 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 an area or like a world with my music. Um, and so basically when it came to um, working with David, he was able to just like push the song to be where it is today. He was able to add production, add a lot more uh, textual layers to it. Um, so yeah, it was just like, I think maybe a month of working on the song, maybe I think, um, two days of writing for the most part, but like finishing it. Um, and then I think by the time I released it, um, I took maybe a few weeks putting a music video together. I I directed it, um, shot most of it and then edited the whole thing. And so that was basically the whole rollout plan. It kind of like all fell together in such a, a nice way. Right, right, for sure, for sure. And um, I remember you also around that time you did a at home concert, like kind of mm-hmm. like in your backyard or whatever. Um, I just wanted to ask you in general, when the shutdown first happened, of COVID nineteen in two thousand twenty, uh, what was your mindset like as a creative, and you know, kind of where you wanted to go with your career? Um, as a creative, I think it allowed me a lot of time to just really think about where I wanted to go. Um, I think we stress out a lot about us not having time and the fact that I did get laid off uh, from my job, um, I did have time to think about music. And so I think Chasing Feelings was like the project that I had to work on at at the moment. Like I had the song, I I had an idea for what I wanted to do with it. So um, all this free time allowed me to really hone in on like what imagery did I want to to follow up with like my name and the music that I have for myself. Um, And so the pandemic, honestly, I think was just a, a, a time to be still, a time to really reflect on being an artist where I wanted to go, um, not only sonically, but visually as well. I think Chasing Feelings definitely like, allowed me to challenge myself, not only musically, but um, in the visual arts as well. I went to Georgia State as a film major. And I was able to definitely like practice all those skills I had learned and acquired uh, throughout those years. Okay, okay, for sure, for sure. and. Um... You know, I, I guess speaking on that, I wanted to ask you about just attending college, period, uh, because in the, the title rising um, doc trailer, you were talking about, you know, how going to college, you know, really made you decide, OK, I want to go full fledged with this music mm-hmm. thing. Uh, I want to ask you in a time where people are like, you don't need college. College is game. Go to this. Like, just like, uh, I guess, where do you see that line of creatives in going to college? Should they go to college if they're on the fence? Should they not? Like, w- why or not? I truly do believe like, and this is my personal philosophy, anything that you choose will choose you back. 
Um, and so I knew that I wanted to pursue music ever since like I knew I could sing, I think. I just didn't know where to start. Um, of course, when we're finishing high school, we're starting to get ready for SATs, we're getting ready for college prep. And obviously we're kind of normally expected to go to college. Um, and so just finishing my high school years um, and applying to Georgia State and attending Georgia State, I think um, allowed me to continue building a life for myself as just me as a person outside of being an artist. Um, continuing living like a quote normal life allowed me to realize how much I strive for being within the arts. I went to Georgia State as a film major um, and I also minored in music. And so the more that I was able to be around music in my education, in, in my academia, the more I want to uh, pursue it outside of outside of music, outside of just working a regular job. Um, I'd always dreamt of being a musician. I'd always dreamt of making my life out of music. And I think college for me um, was the one thing that was able to push me to do that. It was able to help me reach and meet so many people that have helped me along the way. For example, David, um, we met one day at school. And so we um, after that day, we reconnected. Did. He invited me over to um, work on some songs, do some um, background vocals for some of his friends. And I think those were the moments where my calling found me. And so I, I do think like there's no right or wrong way, truthfully, like whether you decide to go to college or not, as long as you are staying on the path that makes sense for where you are in your life. Right, right. No, for sure. For sure. I think definitely like, like what you said with meeting people and networking. I think it's definitely kind of vital because I, once you graduate, you figure out how difficult it is to like make friends and meet people as an adult. Like is, yeah, yeah. in school all your life, you're kind of forced to, here's the people you make friends with, you know, you go to karate or basketball, whatever the case is. And then once you grow up, it's like, I go to work, I go home, like I might go to this place, ABC, but it's like, how do I make new friends outside of this? You're not really kind of put placed in those environments. So. I definitely agree with you there on that form of, uh, of kind of the important, well, I don't even say importance, I'll say a pro uh, to going to college. Um, I did want to, I think in the trailer, you say you were from Gwinnett. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess being from Gwinnett, like kind of taking a little detour, uh, ju just how do you guys up there kind of look at Migos and the legacy of Migos as everybody's looking at that and music scene and stuff? I think honestly, like, there is all there is always like um let's see i feel like just being in gwinnett county for the most part and like seeing that so many artists have come out of gwinnett county just like migos i think it's just been very very inspiring i think although it is the suburbs it's something that i'm very proud of very proud of to be a part of like a community and just like a, a county that is able to just have so many, so much talent coming out of. Um, and I think it's just been, been really, really inspiring just to be from somewhere that's, that's it has been impactful. Right, right, no, for sure. Um, you know, I guess you look at the Drewskis and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. or, who, who are some of the people that I guess like you kind of grew up with who are like uh, buzzing it, if, if any, um, other than yourself? Honestly, let's see, let's see, let's see. Drewski is a uh, Drewski is definitely somebody that I feel like I've I recently found out is has been from like Gwinnett County as well. Um, if I if I'm correct correct me if I'm wrong, um, but honestly I feel like I'm so out of the loop with a lot of things. I'm re just now finding out that like okay some of my friends grew up with like but like Lil Yachty, um, but those are just like two people that I can name that I've I've definitely kind of like seen have, have kind of been inspired by. Um, who have come out of Georgia specifically that are kind of like within the same age group as me. Right. No, for sure. And, and you know, when you talk about kind of your genre of music, like you said, you, you've you been in your own bubble kind of focusing mm -hmm. stuff uh, with the concepts of love and um, even, you know, prayer and just kind of softer sounding music out of Atlanta in the time of uh, aggression, such aggression kind of in society and, and in the music scene um, on all on all ends. Where did that come from, that peace and that kind of serenity of uh, pursuing something that's a little more slow down as opposed to the aggressive stuff? I think for me, music has always been my therapy. 
Um, and so I've been able to find a lot of peace within myself through the songs that I write. Um, anytime that I feel like there is confusion within my own heart, I sit down and I write my songs and then, then I find clarity throughout it. Um, and I think naturally I kind of lean towards slower melodic songs. Um, and outside of that, I do have, I do have goals of just challenging myself um, when it comes to writing and producing. But first and foremost, like my music is my therapy and I think that's why the, I think that's why people do enjoy my music is because it's coming from an authentic place and I think uh, a place of healing, a place of just um, introspection. You have um, Chloe and Holly as one of the alums of this program, uh, mm -hmm. you know, kind of the same lane almost in a way that, you know, different in your own rights, but from the same area, I guess just uh, like when you think of that, how does that make you feel? It makes, truthfully, it makes me feel like I'm on the right track. It, it truthfully makes me feel like that the message that I have to, to share with the world is, is worth hearing. Um, and I think that's some, that's like one of the most important things to me is being able to make an impact on people. I was just telling a friend of mine earlier today that the, it's not about what I'm doing. It's about the impact that I'm making towards other people. And so if I'm able to inspire people or like help someone else through what I do naturally I, and, and through what I do best, um, that's more than enough for me. How's the support been in Atlanta just in general? I know like uh, with you guys, it's always like you're always together. Like when you see the shows and stuff, the lineups, you always see like similar names, like the Jelani's and the Camden mm -hmm. Artisans and Suave, who's on this list with you and stuff like that. Just how would you, I guess, describe that, you know, tight knit community of Atlanta and kind of the support that you all receive from, you know, friends and family, just people in the community? Honestly, I think looking back at, let's see, I started writing music freshman year. So that's probably, I think, 2015, um, beginning 2016. Um, and so since then, I had been kind of taken under the wings of everybody that had been making music already. And so I think they were so welcoming of me. I think in Atlanta, any anytime that someone has talent, people will be able to recognize, with, uh, recognize that within you. And so um, I've been super, super grateful to be around all these talented artists and to learn from them, to rehearse with them, um, put in a lot of hours of working and performing and just building our craft together. Um, I think there's like a, a great sense of community when it comes to just um, supporting each other. And even if um, we may individually find, diff find ourselves on different paths in our career, I think we're all really just like happy to see each other strive. I think what one win from so, from someone else that's coming out of Atlanta um, who's doing great things in, in music, I think is a, is a win for, for everybody. What, what do you have coming up next? Well, um, I have been thinking about putting a project together. I've also um, just been working on new songs, um, working on writing better songs, writing more honest songs, um, uh, performances here and there whenever they come about. But I think right now we're just we're just like planning for the next season to come. I think um, don't ever think it has is still making its rounds. Um, honestly, it's been out since June of 2021, and I, I'm still finding that people are still finding and enjoying it, and it still has a life to live. Um, so right now, I think I'm just in a preparation for the next batch of mu music to make. Uh, great project, by the way, too. Um, where can the people find you on social media? Uh, where can people find the EP and uh, all that good stuff? Well, um, you can find me everywhere at 404 Sakura, um, 404 S-A-K-U-R-A. -A. Sakura, is there anything else? Is there anything else that, that we didn't mention that we didn't get on that, that you'd like to highlight right now? This is your moment, this is your time. I think we covered everything. I'm, I'm super glad to have been able to chat with you, Rashad. Like, um, it's, it's been an honor. It's been such a, it's, a, it's such a nice time to be able to reflect on everything that's been able to um get me to here today so thank you for having me oh no no thank you for coming like like i said chasing feelings since i first time i heard it 2020 it's been on repeat 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 right. so so it's been an honor for me to finally uh speak to you and everything like that speak to you about the chat you know we already like i said spoke to david about it wrote about it from david's perspective so to hear your perspective and to see some of the things you're doing, you know, we're all proud over here on this side of Atlanta as well. So we look forward to the rise of your career continuing. 
guys, everybody, Title Rising. Title Rising uh, coming out soon. Make sure you guys tap in. Uh, Sakura, appreciate the time so much. Rashad Malik for rolling out. Until next time, take care of yourself.